vinyl is copium, man. I mean, look, vinyl's always been a lifestyle choice since the introduction of the CD. Were CDs not mastered well for a long time, for a decade or more? Yeah, they weren't. It was new technology. All the people who did mastering and were responsible for professional audio production were used to doing vinyl. And so they just didn't understand how to take advantage of the medium and do it right. And then once they did, they completely overcompensated and we had the loudness wars and, you know, all that crap. We, you know, anybody who's a music fan probably knows about and would be concerned about collecting CDs would know about the loudness war. Um, you know, the, the big high ticket items there being uh, the Bowie um, remaster of, I think it was, was it Funhouse or the first Stooges? One of the Stooges records. I mean, it's legendary. L literally, there's no air in the waveform. And then Oasis, um, you know, that was one of the first ones. There's a comment famously in the Live Forever documentary where I don't know if it was in that documentary or another one, but there's a comment that like, you know, for for a period of a year, Oasis was the loudest CD out there, like because it had been mastered louder than anything else. So if you put it on in a pub, it was like five dB louder than the last track. It was actually like a brilliant, totally screwed up uh, asymmetry that like if you were living in England at that time, it was extremely observable and noticeable and bizarre. Um, so yeah, and then of course, Californication is another key one. Yeah, Raw Power, that was the one. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting how bad that sounds. It's fun, like it's funny, but it's stupid. So I guess what I was saying though is like, I don't want the channel to be like, you know, anti, -vi I have tons of vinyl, but I'm totally comfortable with the fact that, that that's a vanity thing. I, w I wanna hold the vinyl. like. I, I, and, and in some cases, yeah, I'm a sucker for colored vinyl too. But there's no argument. Like a CD is a digital store of the master of the album. Like, sorry, unless you have a two inch reel in the back and the actual masters, it's your best option. I mean, DAT was the best option, but it just never took off. It was too expensive. So, you know, that's that's what we talk about. There'll be at some point if I continue to do this and it goes anywhere, we'll we'll do an intro channel. I mean, this is gonna take a long time for it to get around. Like I got. We got like 1,800 subscribers on the old channel that wasn't even a real channel where I was doing the live streams during COVID. You know, how and whether that gets filtered out. I, I'm not even tweeting this out yet. Like I'm not, we're, we're gonna go and we're gonna go through it. But until I'm actually sticking to it and we're doing it on a schedule, you know, the plan being Sundays at two o'clock Eastern, that way, you know, people in EU and other time zones can tune in and then Thursday nights, yeah, on the East Coast, um, seven o'clock. I mean, twice a week for an hour should be realistic. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, the first topic on this one, mini disc, the failed hero. I got tons of mini discs. Yeah. Well, I got the key. I'll probably show that I, I, I have to save it. I'll have to save the loveless mini disc for a more, uh, a more dramatic flex uh, than this. So the um, the topic for today we're going to do, so this should be a repeatable thing, right? We try to build a $50 cart. Like considering what people are paying for streaming services on a monthly basis in aggregate, a lot of people can probably afford $50 a month in a, in a shopping spree for music. Um, the thing with it is, is like, where do you find the value? And despite the articles that have been written, I mean, look, the majority of people who started you know and are and are even here and would ever be aware of this like we that we were in on the, the whole cd thing really early um because it was ridiculous uh cds basically were considered valueless five years ago they had absolutely no value you get them for nothing um the fact that you could even like people were even bothering to sell them so it's weird because i suspect a lot of cds have been destroyed um there's somebody i've been following a long time on twitter bruce levenstein who has a similar feeling and I, I totally agree with him i think the the cd market as it exists particularly with respect to independent music is extremely opaque i don't think there's many copies of a lot of this stuff out there and i don't think people realize that um but meanwhile you know you'll you'll see people trying to get silly money for some cd based on you know it's a promo or it's the australian edition i mean i mean when you start going in for, for people worrying about where and when a CD was pressed or mastered, that's pretty thin air. I mean, that's Steve Hoffman world. Um, I don't, I don't go in for that because honestly, once the record is sealed, you can't, there, there's the, the label doesn't have multiple copies. There's not multiple masters. Generally speaking, it's extraordinarily rare that there are multiple reference masters 
of a recording of an album. One that I am convinced is actually different was, which I mentioned earlier, actually is the, the My Bloody Valentine mini disc, because that did have to be um, separately mastered for a track, the compression algorithm on mini disc. And I got it and I ripped it and it's absolutely, uh, it's, I mean, it's crazy different. The signal response, the headroom, all that stuff is completely different and the peaks are different than the CD. Um, so that's a prized possession. That said, it doesn't sound natural at all. It's really hot. The bass is overdriven, the treble's overdriven. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. So we're gonna try and build a cart. Um, we're gonna shoot for 50 bucks. We may go slightly under, may go slightly over based on the fact that this silly thing um, is coming out. So the Strokes have announced that on February 24th of next year, they're gonna release a $125 box set of seven inch singles spanning the first looks like three albums. And I mean, this is just the height of stupidity. The Strokes are a CD band. They, I mean, yeah, their image calls back to the seventies and to the vinyl era, of course, but that's, they didn't sell anything on vinyl. Vinyl was about as dead as it ever got when the Strokes were big. So not only is this completely phony, you know, retro nostalgia applied to a band for whom it makes absolutely no sense, you can still get all this stuff for like nothing on Discogs. And I mean, I'm a big fan of, of this period. Um, having been there as a kid, like at these, sh a lot of these shows and, and at, you know, Union Pool and stuff in the late nineties where my friends were, li I didn't live in New York, but my friends did and I visit them, I would visit them and like, it was a pretty small world. Like up until 2002 when Pitchfork started blowing up and, you know, James Murphy started making some noise and the Strokes had really blown up and Interpol, Prior to that, there was a good three years where like, it was really kind of undergroundy. And you know, there's a, there's a book by uh, Lizzie Goodman that I did a live stream in my old era about that was recently turned into basically just, you know, a compilation of stupid footage and, and hubris called Meet Me in the Bathroom. So that, that period is, uh, you know, it's weird. 9-11 CDs were so popular, they were gouging them for 17 a CD. Yeah, no, it, it really was. This was this was the bottom for vinyl, the early 2000s. It was just toast. You, I mean, people looked at colored vinyl the way I think they still should, which is like, it's a gimmick. You might as well be listening to like the monkeys or, I mean, colored vinyl is just such copium, man. It's so crazy that people are spending. And I, like, you gotta be rich. I don't know who the people are that are dropping 50 bucks on colored vinyl editions. Like, I don't like this. So music's going to become like a, ri a rich person's pastime. That's disgusting. And you know, this is right there. And like, look at the Guns N' Roses appetite box. Everyone's going for the high ticket items and there's, it's working or they wouldn't be doing it. People are willing to pay 125 bucks for this completely fictitious little thing that, you know, it almost looks like it's designed to look somewhat like the rolling, the old Rolling Stones MFSL box. Um, you know, it's, it's gross. And the point is this, like, you know, if you're not already CD gang, that's what this channel is theoretically about. Like I, this promo, it's still got the plastic on it. This is just a, a three song slug, um, which has a live version of last night. That's really good and trying your luck. But like this was getting handed out with drinks at the Mercury lounge, like every night. Like, I mean, this thing, there are so many of these out there. And also it dates from the correction to the cover. It dates from the uh, Mandelbrot cover, not the original, you know, Derriere cover, which is obviously far superior in the genuine article. And like, that's a piece of vinyl I'd love to have, even though it's ahistorical and makes no sense because nobody had Is This It on vinyl. That's a gorgeous record. That's a tribute to the notion of the form factor of vinyl that I think is completely appropriate. And I mean, one day I'll get it. Um, my cousin burned that CD for my dad. Yeah, I mean, you know, this time period, I've, I've talked about this a million times in live streams and things like that. And, and um, I, you know, I don't, I, we'll go anywhere on these, these streams, right? Whatever. The, the point is like, theoretically, we're gonna do a little shopping. But yeah, I mean, th th this was an absolutely incredible earthquake moment. They don't come around much, but they do come around. It's not like, like when it was happening, people were writing articles like, the Strokes are the last great rock band ever that will ever be. Of course they're not. 
I mean, there's going to be another one. I mean, the amount of noise that happened around that Future Islands song was pretty comparable to when the Strokes popped up. I mean, yeah, they lasted longer in a, in a more, you know, profitable and substantial way, the Strokes did. Um, but, you know, bands come up. Odd Future happened. Grimes happened. Things can keep happening all the time. That's why you got to stay around. Um, 180 gram vinyl is a positive selling point. Then buy the new double gatefold vinyl edition of Finally Boys Ashes in the Sea on Mutual Skies. Um, I'm shocked at how good that vinyl is. I, I couldn't be happier. It's so sick. Um, I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to tweet this out. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is interesting. Um, okay, we're going to have to figure out what's going on here. Huh. Um, all right, whatever, I'm just going to tweet it. So, the, you know, the handle thing happens. Um, YouTube has introduced handles. Um, so you can claim your new handle or whatever, but it, it, <laughs> bizarrely, I forgot, obviously Twitter has handles. And so Twitter is grabbing and <laughs> Twitter is grabbing and auto formatting links that contain at. So I was trying to paste the channel instead of this particular stream, but Hey, that's how it goes. Um, so yeah, sorry, th this is going to be annoying because this is all new and it's not like taking off and going. So there's interruptions here. And if we keep this stream, you know, that's a shame having technical junk, I can edit it out. Probably that's what I'll do. But so yeah, this is absurd. Um, if you like the strokes, this is the period correct way to collect the strokes is on CD specifically. I think what's great is the little plastic CD singles and all those tchotchkes. So what we're going to do is try and build a cart. Like I said, so let's get into that. And, um, <laughs> oh man, I, I also, this whole retro website move, I'm, I don't know what they're going for here. Like, yeah, this, I mean, the strokes weren't geosities. The strokes weren't like Yahoo. They were pretty well, like .com was already it. Everybody had real websites. I had a real .com from back when. Um, yeah, we were popular when Angel Fire was on. Yeah, and bang it. Right. I mean, this is, again, it's so totally ahistorical. Every aspect of this is ahistorical and weird. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just gross. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just imagining, like, I'm imagining the TikTok sessions unboxing this. Um, it, it's... Uh, it, <laughs> It's really silly. So, so, you know, what do you, if you want to, if you want to get yourself a collection and have yourself a collection and, and like get physical copies of things, this, you know, there's ways to do it and it's not like a huge deal, but, um, I've spent so much time on Discogs since, uh, 20, I mean, over six years I've been buying, um, because there's a, there's a variety of ways in which Discogs is really, really advantageous for a record collector. One, if you save up your money and you do a huge order from a big store that has free shipping, you can really make out. Like I didn't buy anything for two months and then I bought 103 CDs for $403. So it shipped, it was four bucks a CD and there was tons of stuff. I mean, obviously 103. Um, you know, that's about me wanting to have on physical things. These are things I'm all passionate about. Like I'm actually building something of a museum of, you know, the reference physical object of all these things, because frankly, they're relatively affordable. Like I said, if you're paying for Spotify, Netflix and Disney plus and whatever, and, and, and you're going out to eat once a week or, or more, you can probably afford if you just you know, manage your money and whatever, uh, a $50 little basket on Discogs and just chip away um, and try and, you know, try and cost average this stuff. It's, um, you know, it's really fun. I mean, it, for, as a music collector, to me, th the effort involved in going to an actual record store, 
it's rarely worth it anymore. One, there's so few of them left, you know, um, sadly. But two, physical brick and mortar record stores are more often than not overcharging. Um, sorry, I'm just going to move the mic. It's pointing the wrong way, I think. Um, eh, hopefully it's the same and not worse, but you know, physical record stores, they're under the gun. So a lot of what they do, similar to this strokes box set that they're, you know, going to sell, try to sell for all this money. Um, they're, they're going to have, you know, behind the counter first edition white album, uh, you know, picture disc of this, and, and they're going to be trying to get tons of money for it. You know, it's like, like go to a liquor store, what's behind the counter you know, $700 bottle of, of Pappy Van Winkle or whatever, like it, or Johnny Walker Blue. Um, it's, it, retail stores are driven by high ticket items. The bulk, the slog, they, they rarely get people who are gonna come in and buy like 50 $2 CDs. Um, the other spot we always talk about is thrift stores. And obviously that's your, that dollar stores and thrift stores, you can really start a nice collection there. Um, and, and those are all topics we'll get into down the line, um, you know, as we, as we keep potentially going with this idea. So what we're talking about is the stroke singles that will be coming out um, in some cheesy uh, seven inch box set, repress, rehash. Um, and, you know, these are the ones I've accrued so far. This is a promo, but I, as we go through this, I did prep and look at some of this quickly. Uh, there are people who think this is really rare and expensive, which is absolutely asinine and silly. And that's one of the other things that is an issue with Discogs that, you know, is quickly, it's very easy to identify stores that are behaving in a retail mindset. Like if you see people selling CDs for 15 bucks, I'm not saying like block them, that's, you know, but for your own, depending on how into this you get and whether or not you make it something you want to make, you know, a quick investment in your time, fun little thing to get a couple of uh, orders together, it, it can be neat. The other thing is there's a plugin you're going to want to get um, called Discogs Enhancer for Google Chrome, turns on dark mode. Um, that's very clutch. Uh, you definitely want dark mode if you're going to be browsing Discogs because the, the eye fatigue is real um when it's when it's native white text um so yeah if you go through here like you try to figure out what's the best way to do this like how if i'm gonna win if i'm if i'm, if I'm gonna make out on a discogs order there's like i said before there's a few key levers you need to throw one you got to find as much as you can that you want from the same buyer discogs has no way of aggregating purchases across record stores across accounts so that part of it is just reality like you would have to create a separate overriding warehousing service that all these record stores all over the world in the country could mail their stuff to so you could then assemble a unified order and there's no way financially it makes no sense so that's why the best you can sort of do is try and find a good target as a seller that gets your cart sort of started and then fill it in with other good value and then you can get yourself you know fifty dollars worth of cds shipped right and how many can you get and all that um it's a fun pastime and Discogs, there's ways to make this easier. One of the biggest ways to make it easier um, is actually to start here, um, which is the actual complete number of, and it's not accurate because people mistag things all the time, but there are properly accounted for and attributed to this entry in the Discogs database, 6,423 uh, recorded pieces of music by the Strokes. So, you know, I usually, if I'm trying to get a value bag, start there. Of course, you also want to have uh, 250 uh, as your scroll because it'll go. Um, obviously, for me, I'm in the United States. There have been times when I'm looking for something extraordinarily rare that I have bought from ex-US sellers where it's been worth it, but it's like 10 times in five years. Like I don't do it much. So for me, we're going to filter it down again to the US and then we're going to go filter it on CD. And so at that point, you know, because I mean, again, vinyl is just not. Discog, Discog still got that 2005 layout. Yes, uh, it's pretty awful. I mean, this is the other thing about doing this, right? Like this presentation is a little bit rough, but you know, if we're gonna be doing this and it's gonna filter through, um, you know, the browsing is unfortunately sort of part of it. So, I mean, this is, this is now we've only got 703. There are 703 CDs for sale on Discog shipping from the United States. So that's a pretty solid filter. That's only, you know, few pages of 250 scrolling but the key thing like i say if you want to make out on values you got to sort by seller not by the thing you want and that's not really um 
uh, intuitive. But again, for you to make out, you got to get a bunch of stuff from the same seller or you're paying shipping on individual hits and that doesn't work. Um, so yeah, I mean, and there's also some sellers that stand out. Like if you've done this for years and years, there's a few sellers that you'll see here that um, like I never deal with, but I'm not going to block anybody um, because look, I'm not, no one's compelling me to pay the price that they're asking. That's how they're running their business. That's fine. Um, intuition is not the music buyer's prerogative. Top 10 stock manipulation streams. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, when we find an arbitrage opportunity at Adam's Vinyl. Now, so, you know, this seller's got the, the maxi single. Six bucks is fair, but, you know, whatever. Um, this is probably the BMG. So this is the other thing. Places that don't mark club, that's a nightmare. Most, most stores and sellers have gotten so much stick from uptight buyers that they will mark that it's a club copy, that it came from Columbia House or BMG or one of those services. Because those don't have UPC codes on the back. And like, it's all like, again, all of this is just copium to the nth degree because it doesn't matter. It's the same CD. It doesn't, it's the same digital audio. There's not like another master flying around that BMG used to press it. And it's not like the, the quality of the paper is not as good or what, I mean, yeah, there are some packaging um, differences. Like, um, I just got a haul that has the Digipack paper version of one of my favorite albums, which is Phoenix's It's Never Been Like That. Because I had the jewel case. And I was like, oh, I need to have I need to have the Digipack. So I like tracked that down. There are other records like that. Like, when I was a kid, the Black Crow's heavy second you know, Southern kind of masterpiece rock album, Southern Harmony and Musical Companion. That came out in a jewel case, but that's not what anybody bought. There was a very similar to U2's Octung Baby. There was a huge cardboard digipack multifold. That's what I want because that's what I remember. And, and it's the more, you know, attractive presentation of the album. Um, again, U2's Octung Baby, another one where you got to have the digipack. And it, unfortunately, those things don't always stand up. So you're dependent upon the integrity of the seller um, and, uh, you know, how, how well they, um, how well and how honestly they are um, accounting for, for damage or whatever. Like if you see a play, like, if you want to get crazy with this, so, you know, potentially as this goes on, I may end up getting a do, a, a do I may end up getting a Google doc that lists all the records that I talk about in detail and what video they're talked about and stuff so that, if you're curious, you know where to go and you know, it just helps everybody navigate all this because it's impossible to really truly get like a band focused session w out of shopping on Discogs. It always goes sideways because I'll go into the store and I'll start skimming and then I'm like, oh, and you go down rabbit holes all the time. My dad has tool fold out CD with the goggles in it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, these are artifacts that that kind of stuff is legit. And I mean, you'll find places that are charging silly money for it. Um, it's inevitable, you know, it's nothing's worth anything until it's sold, right? It's worth what people will pay for it. Um, the annoying thing about this is also the flood of various artist compilations. Now you can try and filter this out. See here, there's like the format thing, but honestly, it's more trouble than it's worth. Um, in my view, like, cause it, it can be erroneous. It can, you know, and, and, again, if I, if I take it out, then I'm, you know, I'm going into specifically an album or single only, and it's just too much hassle. I mean, when things get crazy with, you know, enormous, I mean, the strokes are hugely famous. This is a big list of CDs relative to Discogs. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's as good, I think, as it gets. It's realistic because again, what we want to find is we want to find a seller who has a bunch of stroke stuff. So here's the Brooklyn record exchange. This is one of the big ones. They come up for everything. They're awesome. I bought from them a number of times. This place is so cool. So again, this will not show up for you, but this is part of that Discogs enhancer plugin for Chrome. You got to get that. And again, I'm going to link all this prep, you know, whatever stuff in the, in a generic about under all these, but Brooklyn record exchange is so cool. The, I ordered a whole bunch of stuff from them once. And included in that order, it's right here because I just got rid of the old one. Included in that order was a, a early 90s compilation that DGC put out a promo after they signed Sonic Youth. And it's a retrospective of Sonic Youth. It's 17 tracks long. It's got really cool single edits 
It's got the three minute and 50 second edit of Teenage Riot, which obviously is not the authoritative version of the song, but you can get it on here. And there's a bunch of other single edits on here. Um, funnily enough though, the expressway to your skull on it is the full seven minute version instead of like the edit that was on the star power single. Why? I don't know. Cause SST had it and they couldn't get the rights, blah, blah, Yeah. We'd see what I mean about staying on track. But anyway, so this, this, this went around, um, I got this, I think I got this when I was a college radio music director, like my first year running the radio station. And, um, it's such a good introduction to Sonic Youth. Um, and there's tons of copies of it out there, but there's a specific version that was only released in Europe by the Rock Incorruptibles. It has 18 tracks and, can, and the 18th track is a unique version of, um, uh, something it's called something like Dr. Something or other. It's a demo from before Dirty was finished of one of the songs on it. And it's so I, they advertised it and linked it to that entry on Discogs. And I knew like, it's probably not going to be it, but they really know their stuff. So I was like, it might be, um, and they weren't, they weren't, it was not cheap. Like this shouldn't be more than three ninety nine, six ninety nine tops. Right. Um, but they were asking a bit more for it, which again made me think, okay, that's, this is finally, I'm going to get the 18 track, um, version of that. And unfortunately it wasn't, but within like two days they wrote back and refunded it. Like I didn't ask for a full refund. I just said, what do you guys want to do? Um, and they immediately just refunded the full price. And I was just like, like, that's how you do it. That's get repeat business, man. Very smart. Uh, yeah, this also came, um, that's right. There was a VHS tape and it came, this came wrapped around it. I remember that. I don't have that. Um, but I do have obviously the, um, my, all my VHS tapes are over here off camera, but it's buried or I'd pull it out. But yeah, the year punk broke. Of course I have that VHS and all that, but Sonic Youth is a really good one. We're definitely going to do an episode based around getting a bag on a Sonic Youth run. So, um, here you go. There's the modern age single I was talking about. I mean, this came out, um, I remember it was new year's Eve, I think 1999 into 2000 when that single came out and I just looked at it and I mean, we were at a huge party during hell week, like during, you know, in between Christmas and new year's in uh, mission Hill in Boston. And, uh, everybody was just so drunk and stupid. And, and someone was like, came in to the party and was like, you got to hear this. I mean, it was literally like the cheesiest SLC punk, almost famous moment you can imagine. Um, they're like, Oh, you got to hear this new thing. And it was this and they put it on and I was like, Oh yeah, I love the Stooges. Great. But you know, honestly, the reality is that whole history of New York, chic heroin, rock and roll, was it was just dead and they totally called their shot and they just hoovered up all of that historical love and adoration for that sound and for black leather jacket cbgb world um they crushed it i mean i don't care that they're rich kids i think that's a topic unfortunately that i had raised for very specific reasons that's getting used for very different reasons almost perpetually now by kids um, or younger people to try and cancel musicians, like wake up. That's ridiculous. There's, I don't give a shit if the band's a bunch of rich kids, the strokes were amazing. Mark Ronson's done amazing shit. I mean, just get over it. Um, it's it, look, it's, is it a problem if a band has connections as well as money and those connections are the reason you're hearing about them, not because they're great. That's the problem. It can be, um, I spent way too long complaining about that. And, uh, when I was younger and, and it's just, it's so distorted now that, that I find it upsetting and I wish people would stop. Um, it's just way too common. So here's a big one. Um, this store comes up all the time. They're enormous. They're charging straight retail. This is all sealed stock. Um, you're literally buying the CD new. <clears throat> if you got a bunch of money and you can afford to pay 10 bucks a CD, you can scoop up the whole discography at, at places like this. There's a few of them. There's one in, there's one in Phoenix, Arizona too, that we'll probably end up seeing. Um, so this is the value proposition. Do you want to load up on strokes in one order? 
it almost could be worth it to get it all in one place because retail record stores aren't there anymore. Record labels don't sell you direct catalog like this where I could go through on RCA or BMG.com and like just get all this stuff retail and have it shipped to me and now I own the complete discography of the Strokes. This is one I'd be hunting for. I love angles. I, everybody that has been in the cord that I'm on, uh, it's the only place I'm on the internet. Well, now I'm back on Twitter with the record label Mutual Skies. Um, but I stand so hard for Angles. I think it's their second best album. So it's Is This It, Angles, and then Room on Fire for me. Um, I, I just, man, it's such a good record. And I know like they weren't even in the same studio together at the same time when it was recorded, but it is so good. There's like four killer singles. Um, I, you know, I mean, to me, Undercover of Darkness is one of the best songs they've ever done. I, I don't, I, I would put that like top five even. I, I don't know. If you took out Is This It, it's like right after, I mean, <laughs> it's like right after whatever happens. Like whatever happens is one of my favorites too. But um, yeah, I, Undercover Darkness is just such an incredible jam. The, the subtle like trumpet that comes in toward the, in the background of the, the third chorus, I think it is. Whew. So anyway, let's see what we got. Not a lot so far. I mean, we're only in C. Again, we got 700 entries to go through. These are all individual sellers, individual sellers. Um, for some reason, people think the juke, the juice box single is valuable. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't understand that. Um, I see that listed heavily for a lot. Ah, okay. Disconnected. So this is like a classic store that does this thing. Um, look out for this. A lot more people do this, um, than you might realize. So you really, re and look, most sellers put right on the store, read the description, like, a lot of places to save space and be ordered to, in, in order to be able to maintain warehouse levels of stock, they get rid of the jewel cases and they just keep the artwork and the CD in a slip. So this is another aspect of collecting music. If you have a transfer station or a town dump that has like a swap space or a sharing space, no one cares about CDs. Kids go to kids go off to college. They need room. Um, parents have been holding on to the. I mean, look, there's that TikTok with the mom who's like, "Don't get rid of my CDs." My kids showed it to me about a million and a half times. I'm not allowed to go on TikTok. That's why I'm here. My kids don't want me on that. And listen, I don't think that format works for me. I mean, I'm not a soundbite person. We've, we've talked about this. The people that I'm working on this with about doing shorts. I don't know. We're just gonna have to do it and see where it goes. I don't. Whatever. Um, but yeah. If you have transfer stations or, or swap spaces or whatever, in addition to thrift stores, you know, look, if a thrift store is selling CDs for a dollar and the cases are in good shape, buy them because then you've got cases. I mean, if you're going to be collecting, it's actually, you know, smart to build up slug cases. I went to the transfer station today and, you know, I live, I'm, I live in a town where there's, there are some wealthy people. And so my transfer stations pretty plus compared to most of the world. But like I went today, I th this morning when I was taking the trash to the dump, Frank Sinatra gold case is perfect. Um, 21 swing band, all time greats case is perfect. You know it. Yep. Perfect. So I've got cases here in case I find a seller, you know, like that, that those sellers will usually sell for really, really short prices because it doesn't have the jewel case. But if you've got the jewel case, who cares? Something to think about as you get into this, um, more and more you, you know, start collecting and, and really warehousing CDs. Sh Shrek soundtrack is fire. Yeah, definitely. We got some, we got some millennials in the, in the cut on the chat. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, downtown disc, dub store USA. Okay. Yeah. This is another one. They come up all the time. So, you know, um, they're so good about this, like to go beyond that and say, case has got scuffs, the claws are broken. That's so awesome. You know what you're getting. I mean, you know, kudos to Dub Store USA for doing it right. So you can get the, oh, this is the mini LP style, which I actually, that's what I have too. The weird, um, the weird one with like the, the art, this mirror thing is going to kill me. The, I gotta, I should be able to turn that on on OBS. I'll check into it. But yeah, that's the, this is the version of it that I got. I, it was in really nice shape. Um, 
And yeah, I, th I think I paid three ninety nine for this. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. They're still giving it away, man. People don't. It's not like yeah, you, Rob Sheffield finally wrote something about it. People have been writing stuff about it. The best one, obviously, Simon Reynolds wrote, like, you know, in 2013 about the potential future, you know, CD renaissance. I've seen music critics posting, like, you know, hey, I walked by, uh, you know, a dumpster in New York and look what I found. And, you know, it's like Seven Mary Three or whatever. But, you know, there there is, like, you can do more than that. You can make this actually work for you and you can start to develop a pretty cool, affordable physical collection. And then at that point, all you got to do is install something like EAC um, you know, get yourself a $20 backpack CD burner if your computer doesn't have one and you can rip it to FLAC, which is totally lossless, perfect file. You know, com it's not a compression of the audio. It's compression of the data. It doesn't do anything. The audio is CD perfect. 1644.1. Um, and you know, you, I mean, again, where you, where you live, where you're at in your life financially, these numbers may not be inconsiderable, but you can get like a five terabyte drive for like 70 80 bucks um i have two over the years i've gotten two five terabyte drives and i just keep them synced with a piece of software called beyond compare it mirrors one drive to the next you don't have to do anything click go to bed come up you have a mirror image of the drive and if one fails you get another i mean that's the cost of doing business um for somebody who wants to develop a collection and to me the cd collection is is about the value it's about getting the the best quality of the master the actual fidelity of the master um and then being able to also create a digital archive of that that you own i don't get in for the whole tinfoil hat you know spotify is going to go away the internet's going to blow up elon musk is ruining the world like please um but streaming is a convenience is my point and not a lot of independent and underground music, the rights are not sorted and there's no reason for them to become sorted because no one listens to them. This is why the dusters of the world happen because there's gaps, right? I made a video four years ago on YouTube, a DSLR video or something like that about, um, yeah, the Marie Antoinette's uh, soundtrack is not on streaming. And, and I mean, this stuff happens. And it happens asymmetrically and, and by far more frequently to independent and underground music, which is what music nerds tend to prefer, right? Whether we're talking hip hop or we're talking old country or whatever, um, there's an obscurity scarcity tax and it's really indeterminate. Um, and it's compounded by the fact that the rights for these records are not attractive to UM to the big three, to UMG, to Sony. Um, they're not going to buy the rights to like seems the problem with me and there's the next numero group box set more than likely seem idaho like they got codeine they got bedhead i don't know why anybody would have invested what they did in duster but i'm wrong because all the tiktok kids of course i know duster great i threw that cd in the trash at the radio station when i got it it was so bad whatever um you guys go jam out to stratosphere um, so anyway, <laughs> so Dubstore USA is another one here where they've got tons of stock, but they're asking pretty solid median prices. This is kind of garbage. I can't stand this, but if you're an OB strip person, okay. As far as the OB strip market goes, you're either, you're either on that rock or you're not. I, I don't smoke the OB strip rock, but OB strip people are bananas and ten dollars for an ob strip cd is not that bad this this for anybody who's like a, you know an object ob strip person this might be a good store to hit um if you don't already have much stroke stuff you could clear this out you're paying premium ticket and listen i mean from the prices they're asking um this isn't gonna work like i'm not i'm not i wouldn't go there but you you know if if you can afford eight bucks a CD, you're going to clear the shipping in no time. Um, you can get the Strokes a pretty heavy jump start on the Strokes entire discography at retail prices from this seller. Um, but that's not that's not what you know this this you know channel this idea is really intended to evaluate. Man, they're loaded up. Wow. Yeah, you clean that out. Woo. Um, just depends on your price point. Again, here we go. Like. Are, are we going for the, yep, OB strip of this is, oh yeah, my video will probably get flagged now. 
<laughs> but yeah, there's there's an OB strip of Is This It for 15 bucks. If you're on OB strip copium, take that down. I mean, you got two in one store. You got the OB strip last night single and Is This It? Man, Dub Store USA is your friend. Um, that's not where my price point thing, but Japan. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jock. Um, the big one for, for me in the 90s was Tortoise. Everybody getting that Tortoise compilation that was Japan only. Like, oh my God, I don't even want to look what that goes for. Because I had it and I got rid of it. <laughs> Jeez, Dub Store USA has got it going. Um, obviously, you don't need to go anywhere in order to get this because this album is just not even worth owning. I don't care if you're the biggest Strokes fan on earth. Come Down Machine is rough and uh, not necessary. Flipping Vinyl, these are really good prices, but they've only got the Spider-Man soundtrack and two of these singles. Maybe. I'll put them in a browser window. Um, fine Print Advisors. Yeah, I don't know. Here we go. They're looking for 14 bucks for CD singles. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe could put them in there in the running. Come on, it's got to be somebody who's really, yeah, there you go. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, that's three right there. I mean, it's the club. Well, the condition is, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, if you see anybody selling anything that's marked fair, skip them. Uh, I wouldn't trust their stock. Like, I'm not, I don't know anything about who the seller is, but anybody who's listing stuff rated this bad shouldn't be in the business of selling music. This is probably some kind of, I don't know what the situation is, but I don't, I don't go near people that list stuff that's fair. That's silly. Like, what are you, what are you even doing? Um, Coke residue on the cover. Yeah, no, exactly. If it's not, if it's not like in the green light, I'm not, I'm not pass and go. Um, oh, <laughs> get out of here. No way. Oh, this is such garbage. Really? The Best Buy exclusive edition of Come Down Machine, the biggest pile of crap in the Strokes discography. 150 bucks. What are people trying to get for? Oh, it's the only one on Discogs in the United States. <laughs> Man, the, the crap that people think that they've got in their back pocket. I mean, this album is literally unlistenable. There is not a good song on it. I don't, whoa. Oh, rough. So that's silly. Um, man, not a lot of multiple hits. We're into J. Surprised. Is the shirt included? Yeah, it's sealed, so it must be. Um. <laughs> You're fucking joking. Uh, the, <laughs> the, um, what else? This costs more than the DVD of Nacho Libre that comes with the mask. I can see that. Great record. Tap out is top 10. Okay. Hey, I'm up for that. So that's another thing about, you know, coming back and, and, you know, offering content and commentary. I want to hear that. I want to, I want to hear people coming back at me. I'm not here to just like blast out crap out shit on records and say, that's that. I mean, that's how I talk, but it's not reality. Plenty of people love this album. So I guess uh, Billy and chat's going to drop a buck 50 large on the sealed uh, limited edition t-shirt of uh of uh come down machine i i mean look when the barely only good song on it is first that's to me that's like a key indicator uh that you're you, you know you're huffing they were just in such a ridiculous place at that point i don't I, like I blame the strokes the strokes are incredibly prolific like at that time bands didn't pump out albums at the at the 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 velocity that they did they were phenomenal. They put, I mean, look, you're, you put out an album. It's like, you know, is this, it is basically Boston's debut. It's just like front to back. Perfect. They did it themselves. They were untouched. They weren't famous. Everything about it is just perfect. You're never going to be able to follow that up. And you know, they didn't room on fire is significantly weaker. It's weird. It's tense. It's, it's the difficult second album versus the difficult third album. And then, you know, yeah, they went into the whole cars thing and, and, you know, started trying to do new wavy stuff and, and everybody had their own camps and we're dating Drew Barrymore now. And, it, you know, for them to come back and do an album to me as good as angles is just more like, yup, these guys earned it. Yeah. They, 
they didn't need to make music. They didn't need to do anything, but they did, and they did a great job of it. Um, cool, man. I mean, I'll give it another spin. Why not? What else do I have to do with my time? Um, so, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Clean Wax. Oh, Mr. Clean Wax. Okay, what do we got? Uh, sealed copy of this for seven bucks. That's not bad, but a couple of faint marks on the, oh, it's the DVD one. This is another thing from the 2000s, like all the two disc things with the DVDs. You try and watch a DVD now, oh my God, the, 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 um, the bit rate is so painful. I mean, what DVDs were what, 480p, 720p max or something? I don't remember, 1080i. Um, you can rip with handbrake a crappy windowed VLC version of the five videos from Is This It? For 10 bucks, that's not bad. Um, I'll flag that for now. We'll see. Molecular um, music dose. What do they got? Interlace DVD hurts me. Yeah, 480i. Oh boy. Thanks for the uh, yeah. Thanks for the hit on that. Yeah, painful. Woo. Uh, man, I because I've gotten them. Sometimes I've gotten them without even knowing it. I've gotten like the DVD version, and and oh my god, it's bad. Oh, uh oh. Oh, we got it. So yeah, you, you know, look, anybody wants to go in here and start swiping, this is the other thing. I'm going to, you know, people are going to start parking. I'm going to, all of a sudden I'm going to start seeing unavailable. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, this is good. Boom. That's, oh, that's it. You're, that's it. Boom. Naked cousin. You're getting taken out. Not by me. Um, so how big is this? store? Oh, this is a pretty big store. 4,000. Items for sale. Um, whoo! That's your bag right there. Get it. So, yeah, you're, I mean, you're not getting, why's the Go Team show? There must be a song with strokes in it. The search in Discogs is so painful. So, it's not everything, of course, but you're getting CD1 and CD2, the Rough Trade UK jewel cases of last night. I don't have CD2. I'll get it someday. Um, if you don't have, Stroke stuff, you're getting 1251. Um, room on fire, 399. First impressions, 299. VG plus. Um, yeah, tons of tons of cheap stuff. So if you go with this, wow, it's already 250. So I'm just gonna pull the cord and say this is our store. So what you do now, right? You know, and I'm not shopping, so <laughs> go ahead. Take it down if you want, but the way the way you, you know I would do this is okay. I've got I'm gonna go bang bang, bang bang bang. Put all this in my cart. Um, I can't really like if, if I'm gonna all right, I'm gonna put them in and I'll release. Actually, I don't want all that information showing up, do I? Mm, that's the difficult part of this. So you know whatever we don't need to we don't need to do the math. All right, I'm not gonna do calculations on here. But, um, oh, I forgot to give this the celebratory blast. So, you know, we found our store. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to take out strokes. I'm going to filter um, on less than five bucks. And I mean, this is really just how you do it. I'm going to go by CD. This is a lot. Wow. Add, add in to X. You, the, <laughs> the man, this, that band, artist, duo, whatever. Oh my God, the amount of money that mute through at this band that went nowhere. I mean, you talk about like landfill, holy crap. Um, yeah, I mean, the music, the choral, like we all know the bands, that, like as you get familiar with this, you know, look, I did, <laughs> and I have to hear an add into X rant. Um, once you get familiar with this stuff, the same stores, the same CDs, you know, I, look, 20 years ago, I think it might even be 20 years ago. I wrote an article on Pitchfork, the top 50 used CDs, and it was one of the biggest pieces we ever published up until like the site actually got proper big. Um, and number one was REM's Monster, and that has not changed. I mean, there are ones that are now more common, but um, REM's Monster has, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And you know, there's a bunch of others at this point, you know, stuff like Third Eye Blind. I mean, the key thing is, are they good albums too? Third Eye Blind's debut, everyone should own that. I mean, you can get that for free. 
if you have a thrift store, it's going to show up. Um, but you know, if you see it for a buck and you got an order going, take it down. So at this point we're filtering on CDs less than five bucks from the seller who has a good bag of stroke stuff. That's going to get me a lot of the material that's on this silly $125, you know, fake vinyl box set they're going to put out. Um, you know, is this going to be up after the stream? Yes, this is a new channel. This is all going to be evergreen content. I don't know how well it's going to work as evergreen content. The idea is we, you know, I pick a target, um, you know, do a little bit of research. Maybe, I don't know. It's not important. I mean, it's just about the idea of using Discogs and using the internet to, you know, get a, a good value for money um, order together, you know, while trying to compound it and also, you know, for it to be enjoyable content, talk about the band, talk about their discography. And I mean, we've, you know, that's the idea. I don't know. Cause I mean, look, I don't have time to do DSLR videos like I used to 10 years ago. Um, I did a few in 20, like right 2018, early 2018. I did like four of them. Um, but I just, you know, where my life's at, this is as close as I can get to producing any content. So we're going to do is make it as topical as we can. It may not work. No, nobody cares. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but, you know, I've got to do it for a little bit and we'll see what happens. So at this point, we're, we're going to, we're going to sort by artists and we're going to see, love to stay, but the England game's on. Hey, okay. Yeah. Enjoy Tom. Third eye blind vinyl P fork hit that Edwin Collins with a 3.0 brutal. Um, uh, so this is one of the weaker, um, chick, chick, chick records, but I love me some chick, chick, chick. Um, this is a, <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is a, to me, this is like the end of, no, I mean, they're, you can, you can argue that they peak with myth takes and it, in like 2005, 2006 is like the, the, the initial arc of like awesome, uh, chick, chick, chick out hood material sort of for me tails off in 2007 i'm kind of done ish i still love them i've got like the take ecstasy with me 12 inch i had that on vinyl because it was like four bucks or something um where they covered magnetic fields take ecstasy with me it's a fantastic cover um it doesn't beat the original but um 10,000 maniacs repeat offender you can get the 10,000 maniacs entire discography for not much um and and look I don't know how well they've aged. Um, I, I loved Blind Man Zoo as a kid. I always thought In My Tribe was a little bit weak. It, it, the production is pretty shockingly mediocre when you consider that they were on Elektra uh, and it was 1987. Yeah, they didn't age real well. But, you know, compared to how honking and explicit and politico, you know, some other bands have been, I mean, I don't know. So I own, I have their, I've got all their stuff. Like, cause it's, you can get it for nothing. Four ninety nine is, is probably high side that anyone should pay for 10,000 maniacs. I mean, this was anything that went out to BMG Columbia house record clubs in the eighties and nineties. There are so many copies of these CDs. Like you'll find them forever. But you know, like I say, I may end up doing kind of a, a public Google doc of all the things we talk about. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to try and annotate the stream with the timestamps and everything once this is all done and really start to figure out how to do this in a repeatable way. Um, 10,000 maniacs is like, they're everywhere. Um, hope chest. So this is when they were a goth band. Um, again, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to go into this because they're asking too much, but when they, when they started, they were straight up goth band. Like they were covering joy division. Like the, that's, they were, their first two singles are just goth. Um, and up through Wishing Chair, they're still relatively goth. Like My Mother the War, um, you know, uh, absolute total like American goth stuff. But this is the one where they start to go into the whole like, you know, um, folky, southern, overgrown tree, willow tree vibe. Um, and they, and then <laughs> what comes out of that is that they become like a proxy Fleetwood Mac. I mean, it's silly the, in my tribe and blind man zoo are like, they're straight up mirage. Like, I mean, it was commented on loudly at the time that trouble me is gypsy. It's the same song. Um, but, they, but it's beautiful. It's cute. It's, it, I love the, the production is really, really, uh, beautiful and unique, um, on blind man zoo. 
And then, of course, they had their big, big crossover, Our Time in Eden, after that in 92. That has singles for days. I mean, look, you don't like 10,000 Maniacs. They haven't aged well. I get it. But um, Our Time in Eden is a monster record. It's so good. And when you think about stuff that major labels were spending on, 10,000 Maniacs weren't a sure thing at all. They got on MTV. Uh, These Are Days is still such a jam, man. Um, But that record's not here uh, in this store. And, uh, but of the three, I would say, you know, In My Tribe, Blind Man Zoo, and um, Our Time in Eden, you know, and then of course they became monstrously famous for an MTV Unplugged performance uh, where they did a Patti Smith song. Um, I'm totally blanking, whatever. Uh, because the night, and, and it was like on MTV every hour on the hour, like it changed their whole trajectory. They became properly massive VH1 superstars. Um, they were on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, guess who was on, uh, at, what was it, Out of This World? The Cure! <laughs> My favorite group! The, 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 the girl who gets like space powers, this late 80s show. There's an episode where they're at the diner and, and her favorite band, her, her dad or something, gets her tickets to see The Cure. This is like 1988. Like, you know, it was pretty edge like, to mention The Cure in a, a like, tween sitcom like in 88. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it was, I had seen it because that was one of the shows like literally I'd come home after school and get a bunch of Cheetos and just watch crap on TV and like, you know, the girl was cute. I don't know, whatever. Um, Mom core. Yeah, of course, 10,000 Maniacs. I mean, of course you'd say that, but I mean, come on. Is, t- is 10,000 Maniacs really mom core? No. You know, like that, come on, that's Shania Twain. Um, and, you know, let's, we don't need to get into stuff like that. Anyway, um, five seconds of summer. Aging like fine wine, five sauce, man. That's uh, I can't believe you can get that for a dollar ninety nine. A giant dog, a house. Oh man, this was such a weird band in the void of that time period. Look of love, best of ABC, boom. Greatest hits compilations are there is nothing wrong with them. Absolutely, be on the lookout for greatest hits compilations. This is like how you can get yourself just started and in. Like, if you like a particular song, okay, make a note and then look for maybe the parent album of that song. But, like, you don't need late period ABC. Yeah, and then Two Unlimited's Greatest Hits was up there, too. Um, I mean, this is good, like, high energy. You know, I love this period, actually, of, of like, really cheesy uh, high, uh, energy and stuff. But, yeah, Hollow Notes, Greatest Hits, Doobies, all that shit. Get it. I mean, it's going to be, like, a buck, two ninety nine. Um, Look of Love for $3.99, dude, come on, 17 tracks, I mean, and like half of them are sick, and all you gotta do is, you know, bang, I've got it now, I've got it in, in, you know, lossless audio, and I can figure out, you know, maybe there's stuff later on that I like that wasn't, um, you know, I never explored. Essential Waylon Jennings, yeah, I mean, that that stuff comes up all the time, um, and it's it's not a bad uh, Abe Vigoda. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, if we got any, um, we got any fans of, of, of this period, got two Abe Vigoda albums in here. Um, (laughs) that's strange, but you know, Hey, PPM stuff for a dollar 99. Yeah, no, two unlimited is not, I mean, that's like paying a lot for Adam's key. Uh, here you go. Add into X. This is, oh my God. (laughs) Look at this. Wow. If you're the one add N to X fan out there, throw that in with the strokes and you're done for the day. That's your haul. <laughs> Air Miami, holy cow. So uh, Air Miami was a, a band by Mark Robinson of Unrest. This is the band he did after Unrest um, basically broke up. Uh, it's not good to me as a massive Unrest fan, as somebody who like, I burned down Imperial FFRR and Perfect Teeth. I mean, I listen to those albums nonstop, but Air Miami is just, it's like he's looking, he's just making music so he can make album covers because of his whole Peter Saville factory records obsession. Like the music's just not there. There's another one famously called Fuck You Tiger. uh, That's got, again, amazing album art. The music in it does nothing for me. Um, Deutsche Grammophone CDs are stupidly expensive. Yeah, I mean, Deutsche Grammophone, I, I can see that. There's arguments about a lot of this stuff. Um, since we had ramp time, I can go over a bit, but I do want to keep these to an hour. So yeah, I mean, add in to X fans have already tapped out. 
that cart's full. You got your 50 bucks and you're out. You probably got 10 CDs. You could have got as much as like eight or 10 CDs there. I mean, some of those strokes were a little bit much. Um, there's another. Oh, wow. If you're into American Music Club, you can clean out here too. Good prices. A lot of stuff. Not a big fan, but that's a good, that's a good haul up. Uh, this is a classic. Got to get it. You have to have. So like this is, this is like an absolute used classic dollar bin must have. Such a good album. I mean, first three songs, bang, bang, bang. Just perfect. Um, any Lennox rules. I mean, you got to have that. I just mentioned Diva. Oh, in the chat or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's like one of the most common UCDs. So is Medusa because you're going on the heat from the previous one, but it wasn't as good. I mean, yeah, the take the, the, the covers, you know, covers albums are a thing, whatever. I, I, I wasn't big into it. Um, for me personally, but, oh, Travis Barker in the house. Get yourself some aqua. So Arab strap is interesting. There is so much, uh, they release so much stuff. Um, singles, like this is their first single ever. Um, I believe here we go in trippy, uh, for three ninety nine for trippy. <laughs> um, it's a specific ask. You got to be kind of a fan, uh, if you're going to go in for this, but I've got it. I've got pretty much everything of theirs by this point. Um, because it's out there and you can get it for a two ninety nine, a dollar ninety nine. Was weird because Scotland issues. I've oh, I don't know. I mean I am an American with Scots blood, but I've never been there. I don't know anything about it. I wouldn't pose. But you know, soaps, um afternoon soaps, the clearing, these aren't the strongest things in that catalog. But um you know, they're they're priced right for singles. I'd like to see singles two or three ninety nine tops and there you go. Well, and another one, bang, bang, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, four ninety nine is almost is almost expensive for that. But you know, you're getting it with with some singles. Uh, you know, that probably would be a good one if you're into the whole like new new wave shit in this period. This is a great little four CD bundle right here. Boom. Emily Kane, Modern Art, My Little Brother, formed a band, and the reference record, Bang Bang Rock and Roll. I'd take that. That's good. You're offset nicely by two bucks on Emily Kane. I'd totally do that. Army of Lovers is so specific. Yeah, that doesn't get around much. <laughs> ASAP Ferg. Ash, another one. I'm not a fan. If you are, they're a UCD clean out job. I mean, this is, this is par. This isn't even like, wow. Any big store is going to have all the Ash shit. This store is leaning massively UK, by the way. Tons of Britpop shit in here. I, this is wild for an American seller. It's very heavy into uh, UK shit. But yeah, if you're into Ash, you're also tapping out here because that's a lot of Ash. <laughs> oh my God. We're still going. <laughs> and there it is, 1977. So I mean, for me, this is the one I do own this. Uh, it's very, it's a commendable. Yeah, I have Ash's discography for three quid. Connor, I mean, if you're in Ireland or the UK, like if you're in Ireland, Scotland or England, I mean, you're, this is literally a, a coaster for a pint in a pub. It is that common. And, and like the fact that it's been reissued, like, forget it. Like Ash has got, Ash CDs are used for like ecological reasons to like patch up walls and shit. There's so many of them, but in America, it's not that common. Oh, the auteurs. Yeah. This is what's all this fucking Britpop. This person is this person like just a huge former Anglophile that's dumping all their shit. Wow. I mean, this isn't all the really good auteurs, but it's, this will get you in auteurs. Some good singles priced, right? You know, damn. Ash CDs are what they use to make that one house out of CDs. Yeah, absolutely. It would be. Yeah. I mean, just silly. The only thing worse would be like, you know, obviously all the Oasis stuff toward the end of the nineties, all those box sets, the Benson and Hedges singles boxes, a couple of B-52 CDs, Cosmic Things, another one you can get for nothing. Um, do not pay more than $1.99 for this CD, but pay $1.99 for it. Channel Z is a great little, you know, um, alt rock tune like from the late eighties. Um, it's great. And you got, look, this is one of the all time now Rogers productions with Don was in Love Shack. Love Shack is a fucking bomb ass song. It is fucking good. Like at the time, 
it was insidiously overplayed and irritating in much the way that REM stand and a bunch of, you know, other things like this were, but that song absolutely cracks. Like you want it, you want to get this cosmic thing. Isn't bad. Um, Rome is way too long. I mean, love shack is too long on the album version too. I, I, I bang on about this in almost everything now about how long some of these songs are. I just don't, if you don't like love shack, get out of my face right now. Yeah, I hear you. No, I, I mean, for $1.99, own this on physical, have a copy. It's also a really great album cover. I always thought, it, like, before anybody had heard of Instagram, right? You know, it's a beautiful little cover. Um, the, yeah, so, I mean, Cosmic Thing is another must-own for $1.99. You're getting four, four solid, solid, well-produced hits that are, like, good pop craft songs. Wild Planet, yeah, I mean, this is the difficult one kind of. Um, Private Idaho's maybe my favorite B-52 song. And of course, Party Out of Bounds is a, is a monster legacy hit. Um, but th this one is is a very difficult one for obvious reasons. Um, you know, you had a band member going south. It was tough. Uh, Backstreet Boys. Okay. Give me back my man is so good. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's great. But I, I just, the, the, there's there's some real stinkers on that record, like to me. Um, Basement Jacks, another one. Oh, right there. Bang. Get it. $3.99 for the two CD Basement Jacks singles comp. This is like absolute must own. Everybody should have this. Like you're getting the radio edits of everything, which are better. Where's your head at? Sampling Gary Newman's ME, Lucky Star. Like, I mean, you're, th it's, there's so much good stuff in here. And for, I mean, for $3.99, bag that absolutely bag that oh and you got good luck live that was pretty good yeah i mean this this is such an absolute take you do not need anything else i mean i would also want and have kish cash because i don't i didn't look but i don't know if the if the Susie if kish cash was on there if kish cash and the um um uh, dizzy rascal song are on here then i would get it There's Dizzy with Lucky. Did Susie not let them do it? Oh, that sucks. Kiss Cash isn't on it. So yeah, you need to, because it's awesome. It's so cool that she did it. Um, you do need to get Kiss Cash then in order to get the Susie collab. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I keep rubbing my nose. Um, got some allergy issues right now. Um, Bell and Sebastian. Yeah, so... Look, Matador, these are the Jeepsters according to the seller, okay? Matador put out a CD that combines all these EPs in one. You know, look, I don't see the need to get them individually. Um, up to you. But Bell and Sebastian zooted on stream. Yeah, I know. It looks it's, it's so embarrassing. But it's this thing. Whatever. Well, <laughs> shut up, dude. <laughs> but anyway. Bell and Sebastian massively overpressed. Um, the demand that was anticipated by Matador did not show up. And trust me, I tried because I reviewed the box set of these EPs of Lazy Line Painter, Dog on Wheels, and 369 for Pitchfork. And I gave it a stellar review. Um, and I, I mean, I got it. They gave it to me. It was a promo copy. Um, it's their best work to me by a significant margin, the debut Tiger Milk, and then those, those three or four EPs. Um, you know, I would say if you're shopping for them, make a note and look for that that unifying um, disc of those EPs on one CD. Because, I mean, again, you know, it's about having the physical and it's about having the digital. You know, if you're an object art person and you, and you want to, you know, fold the beautiful vinyl copy of Tiger Milk over hand over hand, go ahead. Um, you know, there's a there's a journalist I follow on Twitter who recently went through some of his vinyl and pulled out like a first pressing of Tiger Milk on vinyl. And it was just like, everybody was just like, cause I mean, it's, you could get absolutely obscene money for that. And I mean, look, I've got some stuff like that, but I would never sell it ever. Um, so I think, oh, the big pink. I mean, this also landfill, um, not this one, the one before it, Th this is this wonky second album, but big pinks first is, is, uh, from Oh nine or something. It's, it's kind of like, like it's, I like it. It's mannered. It's not as like, look there, there's like shit like editors 
this is i thought big pink were significant i thought they were interesting i liked it i liked that album the first one from 2009 i think it was the first one um but yeah that that, that first record um dangerously in love um brief history of love i love this record obviously you can see there that i have it because this little indicator comes up but um yeah i love this i it, it's a gorgeous record um it's nice and tight 48 minutes perfect um but yeah i don't know the the um future of this by that point they were they were i mean it's their last album they were out of gas it happens uh bis shout out probably for free refills in the chat i'm not sure if you go in for bis but that's a lot of bis wow i significantly doubt you will ever see this many copies of bis albums in one place for the rest of your life um good lord i <laughs> that's yeah i figured you'd be into that um take it down yeah i mean see <laughs> i'm not a fan but i have a feeling free refills is presently bombing this store because there's a lot of shit in her wheelhouse here <laughs> black box recorder oh is it the greatest hits this is the facts of life black box black box recorder is another good greatest hits target um keep an eye out you know england made me they, they had some great shit i mean it's look it's you know it's not exactly, you know, sound system Bristol OG shit, but I, you know, they were fine. Black Dice, yeah. <laughs> RISD. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. Oh, Black Sheep. Oh, God, this album's so good. That's too much, though. And it's Club. Come on. But this is a great record, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. This is like that whole, like, um, digital underground. There was so much good stuff. Like, I mean, it's pre... It's before like things go totally backpack and tribe and consciousness hip hop with the rest of development on shit. This is like smart and like real good shit. Like it's just fucking such a good album. But 499 is a little hot. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd drop that on it. That's a that's a must get in your browsing. Blur. Uh, you knew it was gonna be with this person's stuff or store stuff. The Blue Tones. Um, blur. So as some of you know, I have the Blur box. Um, which is, uh, I'll just pull it up here because I, you know, I can't, I'm tied to the mic. Um, yeah, I have this. Uh, it was some of the best money I think I've ever spent when I see what this goes for now. Um, yeah, okay, 34 for sale from 1688. We're going to get in there and it's going to be like only CD3. <laughs> um, this you know, mine's in really good shape. I don't have the hype sticker, but yeah, there you go. 1200 euros for a sealed copy of this with the hype sticker. What are, oh my God. Someone's asking 640 for this with a promo Sharpie out. I don't know. I might have to let this shit go. I mean, that's ridiculous. I, don't, I mean, who knows if anyone's actually selling it. I, 450 uh, sealed. Oh, Japan. Let me, hold on. There's only five copies up for the States. Everyone's asking hundreds of dollars. Yeah, here we go. What is it? Only Seymour 45. Just the single. Just the single. 17 bucks. Um, open, all sealed. Okay, that's not horrible. Now, I paid... I basically, I think I paid list for this, which was 60 or 80 bucks. Um, this is not a bad price. If you want this, somebody might want to look at Valley Tunes and take that out. I mean, if you can afford it, obviously. I'm not spending 180 bucks for it. But as time goes on, you know, I don't know. These things, stuff just becomes harder and harder to come by. And, you know, it's like the Cocteau Twins. Um, where's our store here? Let will finish up. Whoops. Did I close it? I did. Moron. Um, you know, the Cocteau Twins box set, the singles box set um, that the Cocteau Twins put out, that it gets damaged over time. You know, people move, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you just, it becomes harder and harder to get these things. And they, the market just goes up and up. Bob Mould, yeah, $4.99, way too hot. That's a 50 cent um that's an absolute 50 cent steal. Bob Mould and Sugar, um, all of their catalog is essentially free. Like it just, it never sold anything. Uh, Alan McGee at Creation 
in a kind of an asshole move, once said that, um, I think it was this record, only sold like 7,000 copies, and they pressed like over 50. So, I mean, there's so much of this. There's so much overproduced, decent stuff. This isn't a strong album. Uh, Workbook is the one to get, but... Oh, Bobby Brown. Dance, you know it. Mm. I remember when that came out. Bro, his name is Nicky Cousin. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, no, it's a good store. This is a really strong store. I'm not surprised other people who use Discogs have come across it. And you do, like I say, they become familiar. I When I saw the cat logo, I might have shopped this before, too. But anyway. Um, all right, we only really made it through B. And, uh, you know, I'm we're at an hour so again this is a this is definitely a store you can build a massive haul out of and this is this is a way to go through and find you know you pick a target band and and you find something that's well priced and in aggregate there's a number of entries from them you just go through and add to it it's kind of the best you can do but that's how you can get yourself you know kind of going and shopping in a way that's more a candy flip <laughs> It's look, it's more efficient than going to a record store. Going through record store racks is fun and social and I enjoy it, but I never come out of there with anywhere near the value for money that I do off Discogs. And it's because of the ability to do this. Could it be better? Yeah. I mean, you don't hit home runs every time out. Um, it can be hard. You, you kind of got to find that sweet spot of a band that's pretty big that you like. The Strokes, the Sonic Youths, you know, bands with long stereo lab, big discographies that you don't have a ton of yet. And even if you do, it's a good indicator that if a seller has a bunch of their records and they're reasonably fairly priced, you want to go in there. So that's sort of the technique. Cardigans, pff, man, I mean, talk about REM's monster. These <laughs> Gran Turismo, again, basically should just be free. You Anywhere you go, it like you should walk in and trip over these CDs. First Band on the Moon and Gran Turismo. One two ninety nine, very good plus all day. I mean, and th these are things just check it off. Like that's part of the fabric of used CD buying. That they're in there. Um, I'm gonna do like another five minutes, and then I'm gonna see what happens in terms of editing and and all that other stuff, and we'll see you know if it goes. I I do think I bought from them before. I recognize this. <laughs> Shaka Khan. Some of the you know good greatest hits one if you want to explore learn about songs you like and then start diving in the catalog, Chemical Brothers. Um, yeah, I would take that down. I mean that's an iconic image. Not if you weren't you know a, a, um, you know active music fan at that time, but more than more than the album that that sleeve is totally iconic and I love having um, I love having singles, you know, if they're priced right. I love having the, the object of the maxi single because that's a big part of CD gang, of CD culture, um, was CD singles and all the fleecing that went on, you know, with Bjork and the, all these other Radiohead doing seven versions of My Iron Lung. Like, it's indefensible, but, you know, Stockholm, four ninety nine is a little rich. Love, love some Chrissy. Um... Chlor. Oh man, that's another one. <laughs> this was like supposed to be a, a big, um, <laughs> this is supposed to be like a big crossover synth pop thing in, in the mid 2000s from Capitol. And uh, this thing, another absolute repeat offender for a dollar. Barely real for $4.99. I have this. I got this for a dollar, Chlor. Yeah, you can get it. It's, I mean, Capital pressed a bajillion of these. They thought they were going to be huge. This is worth a buck ninety nine. I mean, just get it for. I mean, it's a postage stamp. Just get it. Um, barely real for four ninety nine. Definitely worth it. Um, I actually have this on twelve inch. Like, look, I will buy vinyl if that's the cover. I'll buy it. I mean, this is an iconic out release for me as a kid. When this, I mean, I, this is the kind of stuff I bought in the record store because of how cool the cover was and the name of the band is Cody and I already knew him from Frigid Stars. So like. You know, I'm I am a record collector. I am an enthusiast. I'm not immune to the gravity of vinyl, but it is not a value add. It's not a value option. That's what CDs are, and that's why we're doing this. Colder, oh my man. So this dude, um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> mm, I. So this is um, this is interesting. I was kind of mean to this guy on Pitchfork. And he emailed me 
And he was really cool about it. Because basically I did the shitty record critic thing of proving I was smarter than the artist. Yeah, that move. Yeah. I only did it to artists that I felt were being overly clever and trying to be inscrutable and prove the depth of their music knowledge and blah, blah, blah. Like, if you came out like that, I wanted to kind of hit you back and be like, oh, really? And, and then, you know, over the top you on what I think you sound like that you may not even know about or whatever. It's such a shitty know-it-all using knowledge as a weapon thing to do. When, you know, I didn't even, who knew, I didn't know that much that time. And Christ, what was that, like 20? Oh, no, no, to the first album. Anyway, he emailed me. He was really cool about it. The only one, uh, the other guy, oh, the violins guy. But anyway, Colder's first album is awesome. I'm not, Heat's whatever. This is a really, really fucking good record. I absolutely recommend if you see this, you get it. And I mean, look at this, 37 cents. So I'd earmark that one um, when you're around. It's like cold, it's almost, it's like really classic cold wave style. Um, electronic pop. It's really smart and, and excellent. And I love it. Skim Bash shares believe. I'm sorry. It'll never come up again. How did I miss that? Um, Comet gain. <laughs> um, yeah, we need to go with that. All right. Well, you know, again, again, talk about, talk about albums that are used to buttress home repairs across England, corner shops when I was born for the seventh time. Um, yeah, that, that they really should start reclaiming these and melting them down for recycling projects like paving roads. Um, uh, well, did, did, what are you talking about? I didn't see them. They're not in here. Anyway, whatever. They're, um, I just bought, I just found a, a good um, CD single of Combs that I didn't have. They were a, a Boston band on Matador. They had an album called 1111. Uh, anyway, that was awesome. But they have a third album that's really intense. All right, people are calling stuff out now. I can't. Oh, Corona, <laughs> Rhythm of the Night. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Craig David. There's, oh, there's a lot of Craig David. Um, but I got to wrap it up. I mean, this this is the thing. Like, we're not. Uh oh, look out! You're hitting me where I live. I already own like four watch <laughs> when I go to Curve. It's just like <laughs> all the singles are gonna start <laughs> coming up in my own. Um, yeah, Horror Head, man. These, these are two singles from Doppelganger. This is one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, Curve's first album, uh, well, proper first album. Um, Doppelganger is one of my favorites of the 90s. And Frozen, these two, this one doesn't come up as nearly as much because it's on their own label, Anxious Records. Um, cut copies for your mind, yep. Uh, oh, cut, well, lots of cut copy. Ooh, Psylob, you don't see Reflex a lot in the States. I mean, this could go on forever. But anyway, yeah, Cur Curve is, is, they're not on streaming. They won't put their stuff on streaming. And they had their own label, Anxious Records. So it's never going to be on Spotify or Apple Music. It's only on Bandcamp. Um, so the, this was one of the best. It's the only like 50-50 dance pop shoegaze band, industrial kind of dance pop combined with legit good shoegaze. I mean, Kevin Smith, Kevin, Kevin Smith, Kevin Shields worked with them. They're, they're completely embraced and legit. I mean, they come from a sketchy major label background and whatever, blah, 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 you know, sell out this. Yeah. They even the shitty band state of play in the mid eighties. That was God awful. I get it. But the, the material curve did from 92 to 95 is just all great. So good. And it's only on physical or band camp. So definitely if they come up, recommend it. Daisy Chainsaw, I just got this. I got it for a dollar. Love sick pleasure. So Daisy Chainsaw only has like very little. This is one of the uh one of the the quote uh the last really of the quote blonde bands as they were derisively sexist uh referred to in England. Dandies is another one. Uh Dandy Warhols. If you pay more than a dollar for any Dandy Warhol CD, you're nuts, but you should. Um, for the, the first couple, um, they were great. Yeah. The Daft Punk single was up there around the world. I mean, I mean come on, that's, I, you know, I, again, a lot of the bands like this, like, yeah, homework, they're landmark albums, but I'm good with the greatest hits for the most part on a lot of those acts. The only problem is a lot of times the greatest hits have really bad remixes. Darling Buds. Yes. Another late eighties pre Nirvana utopia band that I loved. Uh, Crawdaddy is like their Pixies ripoff album with Makes No Difference and Crystal Clear. 
um, they were a dead center bullseye blonde band. And this is the video, like the UK press, they were talking about the primitives, the darling buds, uh, a whole bunch of bands that had really attractive blonde female lead singers who were also awesome singers and great musicians. So like, shut the fuck up. But it was the eighties and that shit happened. The Darling Buds whole discography, uh, there's only three records. Th this one here is pretty rough, Pop said. I mean, I've had got it, but Crawdaddy and er Erotica, especially, is their Shoegaze album. I've talked about it a million times. I talk about it in the old Shoegaze videos, which I might upload to one of these channels at some point. I'm trying to see if I can fix the audio on them, but Sure Thing, uh, Gently Fall, there's some really, and, and it, Please Yourself is good too in one thing, the opener. There's like five really, really good, you know, look, it's mid, it's C plus shoegaze, blah, blah, blah. They're not My Bloody Valentine, but, um, you know, really, really good, uh, really good used CD pull. Um, if you ever see them and you're trying to build up a basket, recommend it. Hit Death in Vegas, again, if, landfill, you'll find it everywhere. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish out at D and, uh, and we'll be done for this session. And so the plan is to do this uh, Thursday evenings at seven o'clock uh, Eastern American Eastern time. Uh, and then Sundays at two o'clock, you know, to try and, you know, be open and available for anybody uh, in the EU or the UK uh, or other time zones as best I can. Um, this is a couple of good DM CDs, but there's so much out there for Depeche Mode. That's its own video for sure. Um, yeah, the Divine Comedy. This store, man, it's like, it's 1997 and I am in Camden. Like, you gotta be shitting me. There's nine Divine Comedy CDs here. What? No way. I never liked this guy's whole shtick. Like, it's like Lawrence from Felt. It's just, I don't like this whole, you know, I'm Brian Ferry bullshit. I, I can't get in for any of it, but a lot of people did. If you want, this could round out this cart too, right here. Boom. Really good prices. Whole bunch of good stuff. Satanta issues too. There you go. We were just talking about Dizzy because of the basement jacks, boy in a corner. You know, that's almost rich for that. You could find a hundred and yeah, another Irish used CD staple for sure. I love Debbie Gibson. I got all that shit. Yep. That was up here too all that electric youth. It's a little rich at $4.99, to be honest. Um, Debbie rules. Little Dolly, Tammy. This is a good one, actually. Honky Tonk Angels. It's a fun one. Uh, don't know that. Donna Summer, mistaken identity. Uh, Doors Greatest Hits. Insert Bruce McCulloch joke here from Kids in the Hall. Uh, whatever. Dr. Hook Greatest Hits. I mean, these are, you know, greatest hits is how you can find out about bands. So I've been seeing people talking about Drugstore again recently. I don't understand this at all. This was a band that just, to me, did absolutely nothing. Really flatline, not my thing. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Boy in a Corner was a Matador XL thing. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. But yeah, I've seen some people talking about Drugstore, but it's like, I don't know. It wasn't a band that really did much for me, but um, maybe I'll... Yeah, they, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to be like a, a completely off the rails hater like I used to be in these. It wasn't a band I was fond of, but I could see, you know, because again, stuff that people want their own thing. You know, kids want their own band. That's why Duster's happening. They don't want Slint. They're sick of hearing about Slint from Gen X people like me. Um, they want their own thing, and Duster never blew up, and you know, Seam didn't either, and neither did Idaho. So you know, there are bands back there that are some of them amazing. I mean, Idaho was one of my favorite bands of the nineties. I've got more stuff of Jeff's than I can count. I mean, I mean, I just, he's, he's awesome. He's a great guy. Uh, and he's an incredible singer. He's one of the most original singers to me ever. But, um, yeah, so, all right, I'm going to wrap it here. We're going to, we're going to wrap it D. Um, you know, uh, cool. This is basically just the idea. I'm going to edit the front end of this and try and get it down to about an hour. And, um, we'll see what we can do. You know, I mean, it's talking about music. We're, we're going to need, you know, obviously. Well, I mean, but it's a big store. What am I supposed to do? I can't just sit here all day. The only reason I'm able to go over to have by half an hour, you know why? But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I mean, look, this is dependent on it finding some kind of an audience because then the chat's popping and it's not the same people who all already know each other from other social media forums. Like, you know, but I, if I don't keep doing it, we don't have any shot of that happening. So we'll see. 
um, uh, that's it for today. So this was our December 4th stream and uh, I'm going to go back and edit the metadata and, and we'll see what happens. Thanks everybody who took the time uh, going.